Good morning, everyone. I'm going to start out with a really funny one. I was going to say funky one. That's a funky and funny one. Yesterday, taking care of my youngest granddaughter. Oh, my gosh. She had a poop day. Dear me. And uh, she exploded at one point. I have to be very, we have to be very careful with her after she eats her bottles. She has to sit quiet for a little while, do her burping. And oh, I don't think I've ever met a child that toots that much as a little one. And uh, so she has gas. She has a lot of gas going on. It's much better now than it was to begin with. So she has to kind of sit. You can't just, if you carry her around or try to do anything with her and then of course she doesn't just like to and you have got to burp her so uh otherwise it's just gonna come and a lot of it comes right back out and uh so you have to sit with her a little bit and entertain her that way yes and we're sitting there and and uh i'm suddenly going man first of all i could well, you just had a good one, didn't you? <laughs> then I'm going, I shifted her, I shifted her onto my lap. But she was sitting right next to me here. And then I shifted her onto my lap. And I'm going, gosh, you're all wet on this side. And I'm looking and I went, man, you are really wet. I mean, not just wet, it was... You know, all the gooey stuff. Oozing. Now, dear me, how did I not notice that? I noticed on my on my shirt that I was wearing on the side here. It was all wet and smelly. And then where I had just held her, wet and smelly. <laughs> so I took her and said, oh, dear me, let's go get changed. <coughs> and, uh. It's amazing. On I've noticed that with all of my children as well and my other grandchildren. When you change them, they're so attentive looking at you and you can have the most fun time. And uh, I remember, I mean, what is the, right? What is our reaction to a diaper like that? Ooh, yeah. Oh, gosh, that's weird. That, and of course, they're watching you. Now, I wonder sometimes if their shyness needing to go to the you know, learning to potty training and all that, which none of my children had any problem with that, is, uh, is due to the fact that we're reacting in a certain way to what? Eh? And uh, on how that's not good, right? So with her, and I don't really remember showing, as I said, I always had fun with them. With my children, with my grandchildren, right at the changing table or wherever they were changed, and just that made a goo 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 time, you know, goo goo do do, and that's when you goo goo do do. Which child doesn't love that? Anyway, so <laughs> I try to always uh, not to go. Well, oh my God, you go. Wow, you did so well. Look at that. It all got to come out. And, and she just, oh, heck, yeah, and your legs start going. And you... Anyway, so after she, I changed her, right? I had to go change myself, too. <laughs> but I thought, huh, what, uh, again, huh? it just depends on how you look at something. How is my reaction? How is our, our reaction? How are our reactions? forming part of the future right? on what happens with another person even ourselves yes huh? anyway uh i'm amazed over her dad he's uh oh let's see i remember a few days ago she had a good one i'm going oh dear me that needs a change he says i'll do it <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> he absolutely loves his time with his babies. Just loves it, right? Yes. And uh, 
if that time means that he needs to go and change a poopy diaper, he doesn't care. Immediately. It wasn't even me saying, hey, do you want to go do it? <laughs> no, it was as soon as I said, oh, she's got a poopy diaper. I'll do it. Hand it to me. Last night, uh, they both came home a little late, and uh, she was uh, just getting a bottle. I couldn't, I couldn't, I was trying to keep her awake, and I was trying to keep her hungry for mom. That didn't happen. They were, they came home too late, and I'm not having a fussy, cranky, crying baby. And, uh, I, I just don't, no, not. No, we're not waiting. I don't wait for it. <laughs> I'll give it a little time, but when it goes past where I'm going, oh, you know what, forget it. <laughs> so she had just had a bottle, and she was so happy. So when Dad came home, she was still drinking a bottle. And so he immediately went and helped her out, yes. And, uh, and then uh, Mom came home, and of course, as soon as she is ready, but she has to clean out of her clothes first because of the job she has and <laughs> it was funny to watch them both kind of not fighting but you know who's going to get to hold her first <laughs> He's like, so she got a little you know because she's tired now she's tired she's just tired she needs to go to sleep and uh, mom got just, just sat down to eat. And he says, I'll hold her. I'll hold her. I said, how are you going to do that and eat? Just steak. <laughs> I'm going to just say <laughs> And he's, he, so they're both, and she's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm good. I got this. <laughs> <coughs> so cute to see. After a day at work, they come home. They're both tired. They're tired, they're hungry, they're dirty, <coughs> <coughs> and yet, uh, what's the most important thing to them? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, one would hope that uh, every family is that way. Another thing I wanted to mention, I... When I talk to people, uh, I, I guess as I'm growing closer to, yeah, my heart and I closer to God's love and, and heavenly parents' love and care, and on, on how I understand the restoration process, and on how I teach as well, even just my surroundings in my family, is it has there are changes, right? yes. And one thing I've realized is that when things come up with people and I happen to be someone they don't go talk to, I found that, again, that if you just give people solutions, they don't want to hear that. They just want to, they just want to often just talk, but that doesn't solve much either, does it? And one thing that I've been telling people, and it goes with for children as well, is to ask them, well, in which direction do you want to go in these relationships? Or as time goes on, do you want to tear something down? Do you want to be done with it? And you need validation for the excuses to do so. Or do you want to keep on building? You want to build up on, on, on the relationships, on your surroundings. And that's, that's something that one has to be aware of first. And, and, then you go from there. And uh, I find that has received a lot of interesting reactions. Uh, where an outbreak of... Ah, this has happened, and da 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 da, and then I don't know if I want to do this anymore. And I, and I just listen, and then say, "Well, so again, you got a choice here to go one way or the other way." And it's it's been very interesting to uh, then see and what happens. 
and it's been very positive in a way, in many ways, you know, to see, oh, either way, you know, yes, um, I think this is also something that when a child has some trouble in school, uh, to instead of, well, you've got to do better, well, you got, it, again, to give them, okay, what do you want to do? If they're a certain age, I find that, or I found with my own children, that once they go to middle school, which that's kind of what happened here, middle school and high school, when we got here, otherwise I homeschooled till then, that uh, they start to struggle uh, somehow. Not all of them. My youngest daughter never did. She's just like, she sailed through it all with just about 100% A's. And when she had a B, she'd come crying. I'm going, oh my gosh, it's just one B. God, you just get a hold of yourself, you know. But things came with such ease for her. But not all children are like that. And then, of course, as parents, we start to worry. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, what's going on? Why doesn't she under he, or, he or she understand what's going on in school? Or do they not want to? Or right? I had a time with my son. My son was not dumb. It's just he didn't like the structure. He fought the structure. He lost. So <laughs> be it. And, uh, but I think to let a child know that uh, once they uh, become 12, 13, 14, depending. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, fall time. My cough gets a little more aggravated. Um, to just ask him, so, well, how, where do you want to go with us? Because I'm not you. I can't do this work for you. Do you want to just tear down the foundation that you had until now? And uh, just, pff, you know, you're at that age now where you want to just give everybody the finger who doesn't agree with you and, and uh, you know, just do your own thing and uh, whatever, you know. Or that's, that's tearing down. That's tearing down your foundation. You still should be what? Rebuilding or building. So, or do you want to build up more on what you have now, which means you need to study you need to let someone know when you don't understand something in school that you know, holds you back because it's only going to get more difficult from now on. And let the child decide. Literally, you're going to have to do that. You're not going to change anything with forcing them or this or taking the phones away or whatever. They have to come to their own understanding that what am I doing? Do I, do I want to just have no education, no foundation for that, then what jobs are available to me? Or do I want that extra, that good foundation, a solid foundation of education, and then have more choices? That's going to be up to the child. When they get to a certain age, you are not going to make any kind of difference there by whatever you want to do or send them to or this or that. But how to instill that understanding and it is an understanding of well where do you want to go with your life uh, as far as I know people who make it to management at McDonald's and certain other places that uh, people consider well pff, what kind of job is that right? they do very well yes huh? for example there are many menial, supposedly menial jobs out there, which to call it that, which though people do, right? uh, white color and blue color jobs, right? How dare you people out there? Huh? Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> so, but it's a choice that every child at some point makes. Right? And for them to know that they have a choice, then might inspire them. Well, now I'm not, nobody's working against me. See, that's another thing too, with teenagers, right? They're just waiting for you to 
No, great, that's just what I needed. I, I can work against my parents. <laughs> be Disagree with them, right? Yes? Some adults go way farther into their age. Some are 40 and 50 years old, and they still go against their parents. Right? That's silly. Right? I know of people like that. <laughs> <coughs> <clears throat> which is that's just foolish and silly that's not even I'm not talking about that I'm talking about young people still needing direction yes but when you suddenly join them and say well whatever decision you make yeah, about supporting you in it I'm not going to support you I mean help you tear down your foundation or not build up more but um, not you know if if you feel that that's what you want then that's up to you then you have this, 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 and this available to you. And then you never know. Yes? Some people with very little education is not excel way out there in life. So, uh, yes? All right. Oh, kind of the same thing as with, you know, changing a little one's diaper with a poop. You know, that's just, oh my gosh, you know, and you want to just go, oh, bleh, bleh, bleh. Right? is that a good idea to do that in front of? The child who's watching you intently and what you're doing already. She's this child. It's amazing on how four and a half months old, almost four and a half months old, not quite yet. And uh, and she is she just she watches you. She <laughs> really does. And when you don't watch her, right? she also watches if you're watching her. When she feels she's ignored, oh, she'll let you know immediately. <laughs> so cute. Anyway. Yep. I love it. On how a, a young age like that, they're, they're, she already knows, I'm a part of this family. Don't you ignore me? Yeah. Just because I can't eat yet. <laughs> For example. <laughs> so cute. All right, all right. I've talked enough. Let's get into the book of Job. Uh. Okay, so here we are. <clears throat> I thought about this book, having started it, and it's. I find it interesting on how, you know, when did this actually, this book come into, into being? Is it just for later on? So later on, and hey, you know, if things go bad, this and that. It's just. Because of what, again, what did I say yesterday? Most of what happens to us is self-inflicted. If Job didn't have anything, he couldn't lose anything. Right? Yes? Just saying. Right? But he has so much. Right? Right. And uh, why are we... So, oh, wait, wait, wait. So it's almost as if it explains on why, hey... You know, with all the, the wars and everything going on, again, it's like, what are the commoners doing? How are, how are they losing everything? How is Job, Job losing everything? Who's coming to get everything? It's other people. Who's killing all his children? It wasn't a natural disaster, was it? I'm just saying. Fire raining from the heavens and, and where God actually was involved or something. But no, that it was other people. Hmm? And uh, yeah, is this how they explain on the wars and all that and how that's needed? And yes, people are losing everything. But that's just God and Satan fighting with each other. Really? Seriously? Okay. <laughs> people have weird ideas out there. What am I going to do? All right, we're in the book of Job. In two. Another day, the sons of God came to attend on Yahweh. What? Another day, the sons of God came to attend on Yahweh, and Satan came with them too. So Yahweh said to Satan, Where have you been? Prowling about on earth? He answered, roaming around there. So Yahweh asked him, Did you pay any attention to my servant Job? Again, the same thing. There is no one like him on the earth, 
as sound and honest man who fears God and shuns evil. He persists in his integrity still. You achieved nothing by provoking me to ruin him. Oh, now it's not about Job. Now it's, it's Satan provoking God. That's a good one. Skin after skin, Satan replied. Someone will give away all he has to save his life. But stretch out your hand and lay a finger on his bone and flesh. I warrant you, he will curse you to your face. Very well, Yahweh said to Satan. He is in your power, but spare his life. So Satan left the presence of Yahweh. <laughs> God playing with one of his children's lives like that? Because he was what? Because Satan tempted God? Satan's tempting God here. And it's like, seriously? <laughs> so if Satan tempts God, right? And God's obviously giving in. He's like, yeah, okay, go check it out. Let's see if, you know, if you're right or I'm right. Seriously? <laughs> that keeps than us, right? Oh, we can just say, well, must have been Satan, right? Must be, uh, uh Okay, that gives us leave then to do whatever with people's lives. I find this very interesting on how you can throw about half of the Ten Commandments right out the door, not needed anymore. That's what I'm hearing here. He struck Job down. So Satan left the presence of Yahweh. He struck Job down with malignant ulcers from the sole of his foot to the top of his head. Job took a piece of pot to scrape himself and went and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Why persist in this integrity of yours? Curse God and die. That is how a fool of a woman talks, Job replied. If we take happiness from God's hand, must we not take sorrow too? And in all this misfortune, Job uttered no sinful word. The news of all the disasters that had fallen on Job came to the ears of three of his friends. Each of them set out from home. Eliphaz of Teman, Bildad of Shua, and Sophar of Namat. And by common consent, they decided to go and offer him sympathy and consolation. Looking at him from a distance, they could not recognize him. They wept aloud and tore their robes and threw dust over their heads. They sat there on the ground beside him for seven days and seven nights. To Job they spoke never a word, for they saw how much he was suffering. Oh, well, that's very sad. That's the end of two. The beginning, when I started out with this, uh... Chapter 2, Passage 2. I said about uh, the or change of behavior in certain things, right? On what kind of uh, effect, cause and effect. Right? It's a part of the divine principle, by the way. Uh, cause and effect. Right? What causes something? Are we the cause of something? And then the effect of that. On how, when we change our behavior, right, on how our surroundings change as well. Right? Then the, the outlook of someone else, right, even as a little baby, right, on how things, right, growing up with, oh, you did a good job having a poo-poo, right? Yes, that's well done. Right? That's a really positive way right, to look at something that's... <laughs> And that positivity to instill that in a young child is not a good thing. Then, well, instead of just coming up with all kinds of things to, I don't know, steer, it, steer a problem in a direction that we want it to go, give a choice to the person. Well, what do you want to do? You want to just call it quits and tear it down? Or do you want to see what you got? How important is all this to you? And try to build upon, restore and build upon. Then you find you find solutions for either side, don't you? 
then the, the person has to make a decision either here either on the side of tear it down abandon it or try to restore okay? build upon what you got already yeah yes all right mm. What I find in the book of Job now, uh, having a common, oh, the wealthiest person, and again, the wealthiest, right? Oh, oh, so Satan didn't pick, or God and Satan together didn't, according to, <laughs> didn't pick the poorest person. Right? Sure, there would have been plenty to take away there too. Right? Right? No, you got to find the wealthiest one. Right? And it was mentioned as the wealthiest one. Uh, again, what I find interesting is, is, is that Job, as much as he supposedly is a God-fearing man, again, he fears God, okay, ugh, whatever, why isn't he just telling his friends, and I said, well, God had nothing to do with it, what are you guys talking, about? again, how come, how come this is all laid at God's feet, again, that he would actually do something like that. To, to, to a man, one of his children, that is doing what? Actually bringing God joy. Right, so God wants to tear down the joy that a human being is actually giving him by actually following the Ten Commandments, following his lead, just asking. Does that even make sense? Hmm? Uh, also, again, why doesn't Job mention, wait a minute, guys, what does God have to do with any of this? The Serebians came, and then now those guys came, there were some bandits, and then my children were all killed at a banquet with, by, by someone else again. It's all people out there who are doing all this. What does God have to do with any of that? Yeah, but don't you think it's kind of odd that all of it happens at the same time? So, well, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's not true. The story is not true. It didn't happen like that. It's just in there, basically to make more excuses yeah, that, hey, things are going to get torn down again because we got to go out there and you... Fight for territory, fight for booty and loots and I don't know what and who knows what. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. And it ain't gonna end. So get ready to lose everything. And if you do, it's your fault. It's God's fault. You're the one who did something. Uh, no. <clears throat> there it is. I have a friend. who I admire very much. I admire her because of the strength she has in belief and on how that faith has carried her through the very difficult uh, things that happened in her life. First, she lost her daughter to cancer and then she lost a son and to have that happen to a mother has to be incredibly difficult. Incredibly difficult. And uh, yet she 
finds hope, encouragement, and gives that hope and encouragement to others as well through her faith. Not blaming God for it or saying, oh, I did something, so here I'm being punished. It is as it is here on earth. No one will last. Nobody. It doesn't matter how much credit you get in a history book. You're still in spirit world now. <laughs> and so, it isn't so much to, what I glean out of this again is on how, for some reason, someone decided that the division between God and the people and on how powerful God is when he wants to be this and makes this stuff happen, which is not true, has to be mentioned how, how, what the separation, where the, that, that separation is, right? And interestingly enough, too, on both in one and two of these little passages, on how it starts out, God asking Satan, so where have you been? Oh, wandering on earth around there, yeah. So Satan's the one that's cruising around on earth, not God. I don't believe that. And instead of uh, trying to unite uh, that, that the faith we supposedly have with that, okay, elusive God, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Parent. Yes, I often, just depends, I, I don't feel that heavenly part. I mean, the heavenly part separates us again, right? Yes, I just feel that presence of Father. When Father comes through. Not true father, not true mother, heavenly father. Then right? heavenly mother sometimes just depends on what the circumstances are. When I ask for guidance, it's like, what do I, how do I deal with this? Huh? What do I do here? If I truly listen, I'm willing to actually make a change. If it's needed, it always is there. It's not heavenly out there somewhere. Otherworldly. It's right here. It's right here. Yes. Anyway. So. And those are the real stories. Aren't they? My friend, oh, her name happens to be Eva. Eva, Eva, Eva. Wonderful person, amazing person. And she has dealt so graciously with the loss of her children. So graciously. Loves God. Just loves God. Anyway, that's all I have to share this morning. Okay, the book of Job. That looks like we're already done with the story. Let me see. That was quick. Oh. Dialogue. Oh, so after this, I guess we're going to get some more. Only the sufferer knows his own. Oh, it looks like we're going to get into some more interesting stuff. So the book of Job starts out with a story. That's why it's called the book of Job. Okay. <laughs> I just find this in 
interesting, right? <laughs> yes. But, mm, we're doing this, again, for the restoration, uh, the reputation of God, and restoration of True Father, too. Uh, and again, am I always right about all this? this is, no, absolutely not. I am not. Uh, and I'll just go along as well on how I, this, if I were to read this as someone that didn't grow up, okay, with the loving care of a mother uh, who instilled my love for my heavenly parent uh, from a young age on, where it, then it, 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 it's natural. It's natural for me to have this connection to heaven in a way, right? Yes? Oh, no, not not brainwashed. No, not, not indoctrinated. No, my mom was not like that at all. It was a true, <laughs> there's true love there. <coughs> <coughs> and, but if I were someone, so reading all this to me is not, uh, okay, it, I would not veer off my faith because of this reading all this not going to happen because I've already experienced God in a completely different way than what's going on here but if I were someone who's never heard of that God or this and I start reading this one forget this I'm not having anything to do with this this is awful <laughs> this is just horrible. <clears throat> <clears throat> Why would I believe in something like this? I think I'm going to go back to the sun, the moon, and the stars. They're more kind than God. Right? So I feel it's important. It's important to discuss the Bible. Right? And to not, not fight over it. Just, just discuss it and say, that's not God. This is mankind doing mankind's thing. And that is that. And I don't like that. I am not going to have people out there speaking against God in this kind of way. Using God. This is, to me is using God. Using our Heavenly Parent. Heavenly Father or Heavenly Mother. They're being, it's being used here. For what exactly? Hmm? That's why I'm doing this. For the reputation of my heavenly parent. And, yeah, yes, for the restoration, mother asked, you need to pray for father. I'm going, true father, I'm going to do that too. If mother asks, I'm doing it. Hmm. Done. <laughs> People don't like that. Well, that's too bad. Now I'll be praying for you. I will love you and I will pray for you. I don't have to like you, but I have to love you. <laughs> I like that one very much. First time I heard that one, going, oh, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Mm. And that is that. All right, that's it for today. May Heavenly Parent bless and protect you and embrace you with love yes and where there is love there is also suffering and that makes perfectly sense to me cause and effect and that's not that suffering is not negative as i just told you about my friend it's not a negative suffering it is suffering it just depends on what we make out of it again ourselves what have i have mentioned many times when I'm in pain, I can't really take a whole lot of painkillers and this and that. I can't take any painkillers, really. I am tolerating the ibuprofen, but not very well. I've already noticed it's not, it's not, it's, it's starting to mess with my system as well. So I have to just make it, I just have to make it through the pain and just, and just accept it. Every day, every night, I offer it to the children in this world who are suffering. 
Let me carry some of that burden of these children and gift them a little respite. Please, I ask Spiro Bowl. Is it working? I believe so. Spirit Will can do something with that type of energy. Yes, good Spirit Will. So, anyway. Alright, so that is the, <laughs> the end here now, right? Yes, so suffering. Love and a sorrow that goes with love. Loving, truly loving. Hmm. Dual characteristics. That goes into the dual characteristics, doesn't it? And it doesn't have to be negative. Not at all. Not at all. Definitely not. On the restoration path that all of mankind is still on. Yes, we help each other out that way. We unite in that way. Yes, as well. Carry the burdens together. I will, God willing, talk to you tomorrow.